Welcome to Here Here. Uh, let's talk testing. And as you can see on the slide, we actually added slash debate slash discuss because we want to make this a very interactive session uh, in which we can um, talk about testing in a debating style. Um, and what does discussion mean? I actually try to put some uh, Russian equivalents here. I hope they're correctly translated. And the uh, discussion, Google says the action or process of talking about something in order to reach a decision or to exchange ideas. So that's what we're going to try to do today. And in what format will we be doing this? We will be doing this in uh, the setting of the House of Commons of the British Parliament. Uh, I'm sure you all got a word of the Brexit and uh, the big debates around this, so we found it quite uh, um, pleasurable to <laughs> have it in this setting also, since we have the Brexit and all. Um, the House of Commons is uh, governed by a couple of rules. Um, we will also try to uh, perform here. Firstly, um, there will be a speaker, which will be sitting on that chair. And the speaker is essentially the boss. He's impartial, so, um, and will be directing uh, the debate as the debate uh, unfollows. Um, he chooses who talks, when we stop talking, and this is the one that keeps discipline. Also, um, the, the speaker chooses the person who uh, uh, can speak. So he, for instance, someone stands up, and the person um, is seen by the speaker. He catches his eye, as the British say. Then uh, he points at that person and says, OK, you can speak now. So that's what we're going to try to do also. And there is another important rule is that the speaker sits um, while the person um, in the chamber is uh, speaking. Uh, but as soon as the speaker uh, stands up from his chair, the rule is that everyone immediately sits down and s listens to the speaker. So it will be quiet immediately. As I said, he's the boss, right? To introduce the speakers, who are the bosses then? That's uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey van der Tuss. Hi, everybody. It's me again. And that is me, Mehmet Scheingus, both from the company called Ordina. From, we are from the Netherlands. Maybe you've heard from our English accent. Um, um, well, these are, in short, our, uh, yeah, some information about us. You can look, up, look us up uh, later. Um, due to the time restraints, I have to go quickly. Also, I want to note some uh, traditions. Uh, because maybe you've seen some footage from the House of Commons in which there's quite a lot of noise usually. Uh, we, would, we think it would be fun to try to recreate this. So that would mean that when you uh, agree with a statement that has been pronounced by uh, one of the persons here in the room, that would mean that you could say, Here, here. You're here. Or you could yeah. say, yeah. Let's try, let's try that one time. You'd say, here, here. here. Or, yeah. yeah. OK, that works. Nice. <laughs> Otherwise, the one is speaking, you're like, what the hell is he talking about? No, that's not what I think is the right thing. So also, you can make that verbal and uh, try to uh, um, speak out your mind. So let's try that one as well. That's no. No. <laughs> cool. That works. Thanks, Jeff. Well. Actually, I have some footage from the House of Commons to even uh, get even more of the uh, feeling of how that's done. Oh, really? How are we going to do the sound, actually? One moment. Ah, we can do, get the microphone on it. Sure. Yeah, keep the microphone too, maybe this uh feedback control is something to be welcomed rather than Mr Speaker, you have made your ruling. 
that doesn't work. It is clear the House should respect it. And I wonder if you could advise us how we could now move on yes. to the seriousness of the day, which I think... Notice, please, this person, which is very emotionally nodding with him, so also non-verbal uh, um, um, expressions are very appreciated. The liveness of this uh, stuff. So, also have um, also have another video about uh, some funny stuff in the House of Commons because it's not all seriousness there. Certainly not. Sometimes it's, in my opinion, almost looks like a pub. And you will see, get an impression from it by this video. Hope this works better. Sorry for this. So uh, remarks are there, uh, like these are certainly not uncommon, and uh, I would also in try to invite you to try to do this kind of stuff also. Next up, we have some uh, statements prepared, um, which we would like to throw in the debate. Um, but before we do this, I would like to kind of get a heads up of how uh, the feeling about these statements uh, is at the moment um, from our attendance. So I would like to, uh, when I pronounce the statement, um, make it um, clear by yourself that you agree with it or that you do not agree with it. And by the level of sound from either side, we will try to ascern how popular or um, uh, this, this statement is. Is that okay? Can we try this? Yes? So the statement is, there is no future for testing profession. No. Okay, first, who agrees? <laughs> okay. This will be a pitched battle, I guess. <laughs> I'll give it one strike, maybe. The second one, ISTQB certifications are utterly useless. Ah, more mixed. Uh. <laughs> okay, so. Nice. A bit more lively there, perhaps. Statement three. Scrum masters are essential for delivering software. <laughs> Try to be louder, people. Try to. <laughs> That's a good 50-50. And you probably already noticed the last one, number four. I think this will be a pitch debate. <laughs> Russian testers are better than other testers of other nations. <laughs> okay, also. A and we will try, if their time uh, allows, it, uh, allows us to so is there, is, um, so does someone else have a statement that they want to have this in this debate? Does someone have an idea? Can you raise your hand if you do? Yes, we have someone. I'll come to you. Thank you. Manual testing will die soon. Ooh. Manual testing will die soon. Who agrees? Who disagrees? Who disagrees? Whoa! Okay, I guess we have a, a really great topic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, to have this working smoothly, we've devised a sort of timetable. Um, we want you to have insight in this, that we, when we start the debate on statement one, uh, we will have approximately 10 minutes to debate uh, from either side. And um, then we conclude with a one-minute summary. 
uh, try to round up that statement and the discussion, and then we are going to relocate. Um, what do I mean with relocate? Um, you will see that one of the flipover already has the I agree uh, on it, and the other flipover will get the I disagree. So that means that this side of the room will be the agreeing faction, and that side of the room will be the disagreeing faction. Okay, so that would mean some relocation after uh, introducing every statement. Is that understood? Is that okay? Okay. Um, of course, try to do it quickly due to time demands, but uh, and try not to push people because the, you don't like their opinion. So let's not try try not to be physical about it. And at, uh, I really like that chap, actually. <laughs> so um, to make this work even even better, we have a small energizer that actually suits our uh, purpose. That is, um, we're going to turn the seats you're on towards each other, just like the setup of the House of Commons. So we would like you to turn your uh, chair 45 degrees, 90 degrees. And, and turn the row, turn more chairs. So, and try to do it in the first eight to 10 rows. And then um, people that are sitting in the back come to the front, join us. Yes. <laughs> you go. I'm going to chair first, yes. Sit, yeah. Okay. People that are sitting in the back and want to join, just feel free to join here in the yes. front as well. You're sitting nice and cozy. Yes, close to each other. Good, good. This is one big experiment for us, so yeah. just as you know. <laughs> okay. So we we're starting with statement number three, to be honest. Okay, there we go. As you can see, we actually have a timer, so we can all keep track of the time. And one more note, that um, we will switch being speaker. We will, so we will switch who's in the chair, who's the boss. And uh, that is decided by who uh, wears this robe of the speaker. So I wear the robe now. I am the boss. And don't forget to speak out loud. Uh, if you want to speak, you stand up. And uh, the speaker chooses who can, uh, who can uh, say his opinion. And we start the debate afterward uh, in that fashion. Does everyone understand? Anyone questions? No? OK, then we set the timer. Going. Oh, that's odd. Oh, that's not working. Uh, sorry. Just click the slide and then the timer. No. Do it like this. That works. Yes, exactly. Uh, oh, it's crashing. Handy. That's Microsoft for you. Trust this app. Sorry. Then we will do it the old-fashioned way. I'll keep the time. No worries. Yeah, sure. Or you do. Okay. So the first one is Russian testers are better than other testers. People that agree with this statement sit over here. So if you think Russian testers are better, sit over here. And if you think, well, that's bollocks, that's not true, you would sit over here. So now it's time to switch. If you agree, you're going to sit on this side. If you disagree, you're going to sit on this side, just like me. And switch, guys. Again, if you want to give your opinion, you can now stand up so I can see who wants to talk, and I will choose from the one who wants to talk. Who will do the opening statement? Otherwise, I'll do it. Really good. Here you go. Okay. Um, uh, Russian uh, people, uh, as you know, uh, can uh, do anything but not uh, walk. <laughs> yes, and uh, when uh, the deadline is coming, the Russian worker do anything to do it. So uh, the um, um, how can I, can I, can I describe? 
It means that the Russian people can do anything in one day, unlike uh, the rest of the world. That the uh, Russian testers do uh, all processes uh, in not right way, and it doesn't work. But uh, when the light uh, comes, yes. uh, we can do everything, and it will be work. So we oriented to result, and in one day, the Russian people can work in a stressful. And this is kind of extreme development style. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, who, who wants to react on that? Yes. You want to react on that as well? Great. In Russian, in English. Okay, uh, in English. I disagree that Russian people, uh, the good testers, I mean the Russian testers, because actually we are very lazy. We want to, uh, we want, uh, to educate well. And this stressful uh, development style really broke ourselves, and a lot of people uh, start to sitting in their places a lot of time and do nothing and not improving the processes and so on. But the QA and tested the main idea to uh, grow up yourself and improving the processes. But our people just working, it will work on the deadline, and that's it. But oh. no any improvement. So. No. <laughs> Someone. Someone wants to react? Add. The lady with the red hair, please. The red haired lady. Russian, can you? No, I'm going to translate. Okay. Uh, I will translate. Okay. I disagree that the Russian testers are better because. Uh, 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 testing it doesn't relate to nationality or any other factors. It depends on uh, individual human qualities, on the gifts, individual gifts. Uh, it's not um, Russian or non-Russian. Tolerant girl, and she said that doesn't matter the nationality. Uh, everything depends on the your personality. In case you want to improve your skills and do this world better and do your job better, you will. And this is the main idea. That's it. Yeah. Woo! Hey, here, here. Any reactions from the other side? I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys in this debate. I can do both sides. So. That's, so, that's really great. So, the mister with the bald hair. <laughs> this you is sit on the agreed side, so explain your opinion, why you agree that Russian So I testers. think Russian testers are better because they're all here. <laughs> they come here to, to gain knowledge and uh, learn from these wonderful discussions, go to sessions, cooperate, go to workshops. So yeah, that's why I think they're better. <laughs> Any reaction to this? No reaction to this. <laughs> I think we should go to the next topic. Sure. Thank you for translating. Yes. Which one's uh, the so this? Which one is next? Is actually, the manual testing will uh, die soon, which was really ah. popular. So reorganize. If you think that manual testing will die, we don't do any more manual testing. You will be sitting over here. If you think that we will do manual testing for many more years, you'll be sitting over here. And if you want to join the discussion, come to the front, come and help your colleagues defend their uh, opinion. It was more mixed, come on. So all you guys here think that we're not going to do, that manual testing is going to keep going? It's not going to die? Old fashioned, maybe. Okay, so it's all against one. Okay, I guess it's us two against uh, the rest of them. So, one minute. One I have second. a good feeling about this that we're gonna win. One second. Okay. Oh, that's up to the speaker who gets to start. Yes, uh, the, the one who stands up gets time perhaps to speak. Please, sir, with a blue shirt. Okay, I think that the manual testing is a bit of waste of time and it should be automated. 
in case of testing procedure to evolve. And almost everything now at the moment can be automated, UI testing, API testing, and stuff. And all the things we're testing manually now, they will be eventually, eventually, sometime replaced by, I don't know, some uh, modern things like artificial intelligence, neural networks, and big data stuff. I don't know what, 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 what exactly will it be, but I think it will be eventually replaced and we should evolve like automation engineers. Anyone who wants to react on this can stand up, can stand up, so I can, you can catch my eye, please. Please, sir, ma'am. Hi. Uh, I believe that manual testing is not going to die here in Russia <laughs> for a few years uh, uh, because the culture of quality assurance here in our country is uh, not very uh, popular. Yeah, and uh, a few years ago, uh, many of us didn't uh, even knew what it is to be a tester. So I believe it's uh, going to take time to get rid of manual testing. Thank you. Miss with red hair. I believe that manual testing is not going to die because uh, um, no longer how well we automate what we are doing, we still can miss some important points, especially in the user experience area and manual testing will live on because there are a lot of types of testing. Yes, right, right. It is not going to die because that's important. Open inside. Uh, so uh, we decide uh, that manual testing will not die because uh, we still have we can uh, automate uh, a lot of uh, pieces, components of our system, doesn't matter web, mobile, desktop, but anyway, we can automate, for example, some user experience, or we can just uh, um, uh, forget about chance uh, where automation not uh, cover it. This is main idea. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, no, 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 no. Okay. Sir, please. Okay, so um, I think you're all living in an old age. We have AI, we have, uh, we have canary releasing, we have automated pipelines. So why couldn't you test automate testing? I mean, in a couple of years, we'll automate even uh, the creation of uh, software. AI is going to take Ooh. all our jobs. So order, order, order. Please let the man finish. You have a great accent, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Work so, hard on it. So, I think it depends on risk. I think a lot of manual testers will die soon, or at least their jobs will die soon. I hope they don't die. They become awesome people. But uh, um, I really think that we do too much manual testing. I think we should look at risks and let our customers test more with canary releasing and get their feedback. And get their feedback as early on. And don't spend a lot of time testing things that really don't matter. OK. <laughs> Please, sir, uh, uh, sir with the pink shirt. Hi. If the manual testing process is not even mature enough to do everything the same way, how can we automate this? So we will, in the end, always manual test. Please, sir, with the black shirt. Thank you, speaker. So we have uh, the, the, man, the automated testing is automated like a robot. So they are, they are doing uh, some stuff which, which are kind of robots. But the problem is that the users are not robots. So we cannot just simply, simply exchange them. So until the users are not robots, and we need manual testing as well, because the users are doing stupid things sometimes, and the robot cannot find this out. Please, sir, with the blue shirt. Well, the most part of non-automatable tests I've heard about is uh, UI tests and user, exp well, user experience tests. But why are you saying that uh, you should, uh, well, simulate stupid actions of a user? You can, well, design a nice interface and then 
uh, got a user experience session with some kind of a focus group. Let users make the usual, let's say, stupid things they usually Ooh, do. Yeah. But all other stuff and the, the, I mean, the testing procedure should be here, automated. Here. User experience is on a border between testing and, I mean, taking data from focus groups. Thank you, sir. We will have to uh, end this discussion. We have to go to the last one. Very well. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much. I think it looks at a feasibility point of view. You develop a code line. Are you really going to develop a testing code line the exact same to test everything? No, it's not feasible. You need manual testing at the end of the day. Of course, my, uh, automatic testing is important, but it's one tool. Manual testing is another tool. I don't believe one will replace the other completely. Thank you. This is enough time for this statement. We have to go on to the next one. I will not tolerate this kind of behavior in my chamber, sir. <laughs> I, uh, Which uh, one should we do? Uh, the next one is statement number uh, number f uh, number three, uh, number four, actually. Four? Okay. Yes, or statement number two. But I think the start with statement number two. Yeah. Yes, this one, right? Yeah. I wish this would work, but it's not. Okay. So, statement number two: ICQB certifications are utterly useless. This point is open for debate. Please low relocate. If you agree, you would be here. The ICQB certifications are utterly useless, or other certifications. If you think they are really valuable, you would be sitting over here. Sorry, it doesn't say other. It says ICQB. Well, okay. Let's let's keep it to ICQB then. Yes, yes. <laughs> is everyone relocated? Please do it quickly. And remember, if you have an opinion, you want to talk, even while someone is talking, you can stand up so I can see that you have an opinion to uh, uh, say, so I can choose out of those people. Yes? Okay. You want to? Opening statement. Opening statement, sure. The madam in the green dress, please proceed. Uh, okay, I uh, disagree that ICQB certification uh, useless. Uh, in the one hand, uh, maybe in our country it's a bit useless if uh, we talk about certification to passing an exam. Because for a lot of people it's kind of uh, panacea to get this certification. But uh, I uh, think that it's not useless. You have to read all this uh, syllabus and uh, data for preparation for this exam because it gives you the uh, base uh, moments of testing uh, techniques, uh, uh, all your understanding what is the testing uh, really for. And from that side, really it's not useless because nowadays I face with the problem that a lot of people come to their uh, testing and quality assurance and they decide that this is not technical profession in general and the main idea of uh, testing is just to find the bug and compare the, uh, your requirements and uh, real product, that's it. Well, I don't believe that this is useless. There are very many people who Many people try to read a very thick book and they realize that, uh, well, maybe one eighth or one tenth of the material is useful. They may have spent uh, very much money, uh, but at the end, at the end of the day, they just get some, a bunch of useless knowledge. Да, она говорит, что бесполезно, многие люди пытаются, там, пытаются сдавать экзамены, и ну, ничего не хватает. Spent a lot of time to prepare for this exam, and they decide that only, for example, five, ten percent was like uh, useful information from uh, these uh, books, kind of. Okay, anyone? Anyway. 
Yeah. Please miss with a black t-shirt. I agree with previous orator and uh, as well I would like to add that in order to get, for example, this foundation level certificate for SQKB, you already have to work in this uh, testing uh, area and is it really possible that you are working during half a year and you have no idea what is black box te testing, what is automated testing. You can Google it actually, you don't have to read all the information which is uh, presented in syllabus and you have got a lot of information for it that may be useful but the main, the main, I don't know, <laughs> Yeah, the main idea is that probably you need only 10% of this information. And if you don't use it like daily, it, it adds like nothing to your work. Yeah. There are no other people who want to react, please, sir. Yeah, I should say that uh, I may agree that ISTKB certificate may be useless in Russia, but it's still a few nicely looking letters in your CV. But every certification is uh, about uh, restructuring your knowledge and, uh, I don't know, uh, thinking twice about what you've learned. You don't need ISTKB certificate to work as a quality assurance engineer, but uh, it's always a nice idea to restructure your knowledge. Please, sir. Thank you. The ISCQB exams were useful in the 90s when the testing methodologies did not change. Because the testing methodologies are changing every two years, three years, four years, and they do not keep the exams up to date with the current testing trends, they are therefore useless. Here, here. Good point. <laughs> Please, sir, with the black shirt. Thanks. So these exams defines actually a common language between all the companies uh, in the world. So if, uh, if someone has this exam, then another company will know that at least the basics are known for this candidate. So it is good for you if you want to change your job maybe or, or it looks good in the CV. And it also helps the, the HR team that they know that this, this guy or this girl must know at least something about testing and they are not uh, completely black. <laughs> Actually, I totally agree with previous speakers. Actually, I have experienced it. I work uh, in different companies and this is was international companies. And really, uh, when uh, people from uh, Russia, Ukraine come to international companies, sometimes it's very hard to uh, compare uh, kind of and understand each other. Names of tests, what are you doing, and you're just wasting time for communication to discuss what are you doing, what kind of test, for, why, for which purpose, your strategy, but in case you use uh, the same uh, Mm, name of test and strategies and methodologies, it's more easy to communicate and you're not wasting time for the communication. Please miss with the white shirt. Uh, hey, uh, I have one point. Uh, so as I know, and a lot of uh, like um, companies and other people are passing this certificate and when uh, like such people come to um, new company so they trying to like um, uh, on the interview to, to say something like oh uh, I have such certificate so and uh, like uh, people are just uh, who is doing such interview they just wait time waste time so, and like uh, it is uh, useless uh, because uh, it's uh, um, take time not only uh, <laughs> from engineers like who are trying to pass it but also from managers here, here. Here, here. that will conclude if there are no other uh, please sir with the bar shirt and that will be the last speaker uh, who have the uh, graduated from universities this side that who have graduated from universities who have diplomas, then all of them are useless in that, in that perspective. Here, here. At least this certificate 
uh, say that the people know the basics. When the government's uh, keen on testing, like uh, for example, when the testing uh, programs are open in universities, maybe these certificates will be useless. But now they are very useful, I think. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so we have to round up, don't we? Yes, I'll do a short summary because we didn't do a summary after each statement, so now I have to do four in one, <laughs> um, or three in one. So the first statement we started with was statement three. Can you go to statement three? Certainly. So, oh no, not statement three. Statement four was. That uh, I uh, erased to replace it with statement ah. five. Okay. So Russian, Russian testers, testers right? Russian that testers, was the first indeed. one. So Russian testers are, um, are, are basically just testers. It's good that they're here, but the best testers are here. So if I would sum it up, the best testers are here, either Russian or either from somewhere else. The best testers are here. It's really great to see people <laughs> shopping for knowledge. So what was the, the next one? Manual testing will die. Yes. yes. So manual testing will die. Um, I had to sit with my colleague on this side. I do think at some point we won't be doing uh, testing anymore um, because the world will be taken over by robots. So, um, and then we failed as testers. I think creativity in testing is one of the most difficult things for automation to do. So. My point of view is that we still will do manual testing in a couple of years, but it will be less and it will be more creative. That's my opinion, but everybody else has a different view on this. But I wanted to give you my opinion and also the things that I took out of the discussion. Um, so manual testing will probably not die. Agreed. And I believe the last one was this one. So. This, this was a really cool one because this discussion happened last year in the speaker's room um, when I was here as well. And then we had actually two groups of speakers, you know, uh, discussing this topic. Um, I do think they can be useful, but I do think the current way of, of checking knowledge isn't any good. Um, so if you have the diploma or not, I think it's good to know that there is material out there that will help you to align. And uh, if you have the certification or not, it doesn't make really a big difference if you're a good tester. Most of the time it's experience and creativity which makes you a great tester. Or nowadays we look at automation skills way more. So you wanted to add something? Yes. On the fly you changed the statement. It's about certifications and not about ISTQV. Yeah, that's... <laughs> So the certification, I yeah. find utterly useless, <laughs> but that's true. So the material is great, the, the certifications are useless, unless you want to get a job, because then you need the certifications. Here, here. Thank you very much for joining us. Keep up uh, debating in this uh, beautiful conference, uh, share your knowledge and share your opinion, and uh, thank you for joining us. Yes, and use the break for more discussions, right? Also the people in the back, start doing more discussions and talk about testing because it's important. It's a great field of work we're all in. So do testing, talk testing. Bye-bye. You're very welcome.